Welcome to the Unspoken Truth Podcast Show. This your boy JB, aka Spoken. And everybody already know this is the same routine. I don't switch it up for nobody. I don't say the special guest name because everybody know everybody who I bring on the show is a walking, living icon, living or dead. Cause we gonna be there anyway. It don't matter. I'm just saying, living or dead, don't matter. You know what I'm saying? True, true. You know, it don't matter. This is this is history in, in the making right now. We are gonna make history today. So, without no further ado, my brother, why don't you introduce yourself, my my legend? Hey, hey, y'all. This is your boy Jason Weaver, man. Finally able to get on the show with Spoke. I'm so happy about this, man. Thank you for having me, Spoken Reasons, man. Yes, sir. And I really, I really appreciate it, dog. This is a uh, this is a treat because we've been trying to get together yes, and sir. build uh, on some projects and stuff too. Like we've been yeah. we've been looking to like you know align for a long time. So to be able to uh, to get on your podcast, man, I appreciate it. I'm such a huge fan of your work. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Like I, I I appreciate when people uh when they throw that term legend and all that 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 that's all good, man. But what uh what I really can appreciate myself uh as well, you know, just being a peer and a colleague. And seeing cats like you coming up, man, and uh, and you sharing your platform and your energy with with other guys like myself that came, you know, a little bit before you. So yeah, man, yeah. we all in this shit together, man. And I just uh, <laughs> I appreciate you a great deal, brother. All good, all good, man. You know, uh, much love in return too. Uh, I grew up watching you, you know, um, uh, smart guy, Michael Jackson movie, <clears throat> uh, you know, ATL, a lot of different other things. Um, man, and you know, uh, uh, seeing you being one of the first, I don't know if you were the first or, or the second, but I've never seen anybody your age that young do acting and singing and had hits behind it, but wasn't really like on the, on the forefront, like, yo, 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 this, this, this dude right here got some hits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. So I don't think people really seeing it. You were more so on the back burner of it but we're making mm-hmm. silent money but which is cool as hell <laughs> which yeah, yeah, is cool yeah. as hell you know what I'm saying yeah. so uh, I respect it man I just respect you in general man so I got 18 questions for you alright Jason man hit it man go ahead alright man. man he said hit it he said hit it alright so let's go ahead and run it okay number one who is Jason Weaver man first and foremost Jason Weaver is a man like <laughs> trill, you know what I'm saying? Ten toes down, you know what I'm saying? Real. Um, I'm from the shy man. I'm from Chicago. Uh, okay. You know, so I I I was brought up in a way, uh, first and foremost, by my mother, but also just you know my environment and the people I was around. I come from a good upbringing, but also mm. come from a traditional neighborhood. You know what I'm mm. saying? So I came up with traditional values. Um, and I came up around people that wouldn't take no shit. So yeah. you know, a lot of the time, <laughs> a lot of times when people, you know, they tell you, be like, man, you're so cool. You're so humble. I'm like, well, I came up cause you know, if I wasn't cool and humble, I get my ass beat. So Real. it just kind of come natural. So that that's first and foremost who I am. I'm a father, yeah. you know what I mean? And, uh, and that, that's a major, um, a major aspect of my life, man. Like one of the, one of the main things that, uh, motivates me now, you know what I'm saying? It, just keep going and to keep striving and to keep doing bigger and better things because I got a, I got a son that's looking at me, you know mm. what I'm saying? As an example. So, um, and, and overall past that, man, I'm just a friend, man. I'm just a, just a cool dude out here. Just like everybody else is just trying to make his way and blaze his own trail and not trying to hurt anybody in the process. Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And not trying to hurt myself in the process. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to every day, man, as, as I have been doing since I was little, I just try to keep God first, man. I try to keep my priorities uh, in check. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Rec- recognizing what really matters in life and and ultimately, like, what really makes me happy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I like to say I'm a, I'm a well-rounded individual. And I, and I know you can relate to that because I've seen a lot of your – I've seen a lot of your videos and stuff like that. And, and uh, yeah. although you and I have never met each other like that and kicked it with each other like that, I could tell from your Well, we, well, we met each other. We, we met each other. We ran into each other two times. I don't know if you remember. We ran into each other at an ADD comedy night, and I, and I ran into each other. We ran into each other on Paramount. I think you were shopping a... Um, That's right. A script. I, and it was years I was ago. On, so I, I saw you actually twice. I saw you twice. 
Okay. okay. Man, look, man, we all forget, bro. I get it. Come on, bro. We come on, bro. I do it, the, bro. It, it, I go. I got. I got the same problem too, bro. I'd be like, yeah, you know, uh, we ain't running to. Yeah, come on, man. You know, I saw you like eighteen times, bro. I'm like exactly, exactly. Cause you, cause you know how it is when you running around the street and then you doing bro. job to job and running. Come on, man. Way. But either which way, like you know, I respect you a great deal, and I'm a huge yeah. fan um, yeah. of what you do, man. So, like I said, you know, I I could tell from your persona and. um and just your your natural conversation and doing interviews, you you get the same thing that I'm on, man. It's it's just yeah, about yeah. having a balance, you know, <laughs> you know, doing doing what we do, for real, know, on, on camera and on screen, yeah. And then coming home and being the men that we actually are, for and real, the fathers dude. that we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So. Much love, much love, much love, man. Yeah. Uh, since you say that, you know, you're talking about balance and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I might as well go into the the question that got everything to do with your balance. <laughs> sure. What, what brings you peace, and what will happen if you don't get that peace? Oh, oh, oh that's such a great <laughs> question. That's such a great question, and, and one and one that I've never asked, but I'm glad that you did ask me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Prayer and meditation, bro. And I'm not okay. trying to get look. I'm not trying to get on here and make it seem like I'm some holy roller. Or I got my finger on the pulse of what God won't and all that. That ain't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a spiritual person. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, throughout the course of my life and throughout the course of time, and you know how this is, bro. Like mm. you know, you go through your fair share of ups and downs. For real. You have you encounter a lot of different types of energies <laughs> that you have to that you yeah. have to figure out how to how to move around or move with and. And a lot of times, man, when um, you have a lot of energies around you and a lot of different people and um, and influences and things like that, you can you can get lost in the sauce, yeah. unbeknownst yeah. to you at that time. Yeah. And what I've come to learn, I mean, it was instilled in me at an early age because I grew up in the church, mm -hmm. but I didn't come into my spirituality until I became a man. Oh. And then and and really going through some different challenges in life that we all do where I had no other choice, but to turn to God and be like, okay, mm. I'm at wit's end. Like what the mm. fuck? Like what, what do you want me to do? Cause yeah. I don't, I don't get it. And it was in that time. It was during those times where I was at complete wit's end that I was advised to reconnect with yeah. my creator. Like <laughs> my, my, my pastor, Jeremiah Wright, shout out to Jeremiah Wright. Oh, Jeremiah Wright. Wright. Okay. That's my pastor. I grew up okay. in United okay. Church of God in Christ, Chicago, 95th Street. Okay. okay. Um, so he and I had a conversation one one evening because I was having a hard time. Yeah. And he said, Jason, man, you you know, you got a purpose in life. And in order for you to keep, you know, centered in that purpose and to keep focused, man, you got to reconnect because it kind of seems just like you're scattered. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, how often do you pray? Mm. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm praying, you know, when, and I was more or less praying when I needed something, yeah. you know, when I was seeking, when I was seeking some kind of solution or some kind of resolution, but I was never praying just out of straight gratitude, mm. you know what I'm saying? And just being like thankful and grateful regardless of whatever was going on. Yeah. So I started, I started practicing that, like, like, like really consciously practicing that every day, just even if I'm getting on my knees and I'm just saying, thank you. And then yeah. after that, being still like trying to the best of my ability to silence my mind and to silence my spirit so that I could hear the message coming back mm. so, that I, so, so that I could be granted that peace so that mm. I could walk out the door mm. and deal with the shit I got to deal with. For real. For you know real. what I'm saying? Bro, like, for you real, know, bro. You, you, you know where I'm coming from. I know what you're talking about, bro. So, so, so it's like, <laughs> So honestly, that's what, that's what brings me my peace and being with my family. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, being with my son, kicking it with my mama, you know, going and hanging out with my partners. Like we go to our little uh, sports bar. Shout out to all my <laughs> folks at TJ. Um, man, I look at ball games, man. I order a beer and a shot. You know, I keep yeah. it G, man. And just keep it, you know, I keep it cool, man. Yeah, and just keep man. it balanced. And, For real. and that way I'm, I'm not going crazy. Yeah. You know? That's a hey, 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 shout out to that response, man. Everybody need to hear that, man. Uh, it's balanced to, to, to everything, uh, especially no matter what you do, it doesn't matter if it's entertainment because a lot of people they look at it like it's entertainment, but no, nah, right. it, it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, lawyer, a garbage man, or whatever. If you run it a million times per minute and you don't give yourself the chance to reflect and sit down 
and 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 give and 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 just soak up what all has came to you within all that Absolutely. time. You can crash. You can Absolutely. crash, and it's like a motherboard. It's like a computer. All that info came, but you ain't shut the computer off. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, then that, and then that process is shutting down. No information is really retained. Exactly. No useful information. So, yeah. so you, 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 you got you to gotta have it. It's like you said, that, that applies to anybody in everybody's life. Like what we're talking about is living a successful life. Hmm. So you could, you could be the successful garbage man. Mm-hmm. You could be the successful computer engineer. You could be the successful doctor. You could be the successful actor. Yeah. If you are able to maintain some kind of balance between, you know, like day to day shit mm-hmm. and your true purpose and what you've been put here on this earth to do, Damn. you know what I'm saying? And, and your mission. So I and 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 like I said, I'm I'm glad that you asked that question, um, because I peep a lot of your material too, and I'm so. I, I think one of the main reasons too why I love what you do so much is is how you challenge people to reach deeper down inside. You know what I'm saying? To think. And to, in some kind of way, look themselves in the mirror Mm. and try to find their own individual answers. I noticed, I noticed that you do that a lot with your audience Mm. and with, and with the people that you directly speak to. And that's why, again, I'm I'm so glad to be on this show and to be able to like really chop it up with you on a real level. Cause Mm. it's rare when you run into cats like that, you know what I'm saying? Especially those of y'all who are really at the forefront right now and, and uh, really pushing the culture forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really have a, a, a space, you know, where you can talk and be transparent and be real and have that kind of relationship with your audience. It's, it's rare to see a dude get busy like that and do it on the righteous level. So, man, I, I, I mm. fucks with you, JB. Like, man, man. You, you cool, you. man. And, and you got to show me how to fish, too, bro. Oh, like, oh, 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 you already know what's you up. Got, you you got to teach me how to fish, bro. I, don't, I do not know how to fish. I did not grow up. Hey, 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 I ain't got no <laughs> I ain't got no fish on me, but because you know it's real, my son fishing toy right here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? so yeah, man, hey man, thank you, man. Thank you, man, for real, for real. Absolutely. No, I, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And you know, it's important that we uh as black men, as young black men in this industry, uh, whether I came in this game before you or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's about uplifting each other. It's about encouraging each other. And it's about reminding each other of our purposes here. Yeah. And what we're really here to do is not just about us living in our moment and playing on our fame and all of that. We've been blessed to be a blessing to others. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Through our gifts. So, um, you know, it's important that we just remind each other that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, really- yeah. Much love, much love. All yes, right, sir. all right. Give us a story of the worst whooping you've ever gotten in your life. Oh. Not, not in the streets, but but parent, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. I remember. I remember. Uh, I, I, um, there was something. I think I wanted to go outside. I was like, I was nine years old. Oh, he know that. He know. He remember the age. Yeah, I remember the age. <laughs> that was like that was like the last real ass whooping oh, I got because I got my ass whooped so oh, good. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't cut up. I didn't cut up no more after that. But I remember I wanted to go outside and play ball. And it was like on a, uh, it was a school weekday. And usually me and my partners, my guys I grew up in the neighborhood with, we would either go to my friend uh, Alfred's house. Shout out to Boog. What's up, Boog? If you watch it, mm. we'd either go to his house or we go to uh, Montreal's house mm. or we would go to my house and we would hoop. So on this particular day, my mama didn't want nobody out in the front hoop. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go over to Boog's house. I'm going to hoop over there. She's like, okay, well, you got your homework done? I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, once I get through hooping, I'm going to come through. I'm going to take a shower. And then she's like, no, nah, I want you to get it done now. And usually she didn't do that. Yeah, usually yeah, yeah. she let me, you know, she let me do my thing and come back. But on this particular day, she it really wanted to, like, enforce the rule. Oh, Lord. So I'm like, so, you know, I got a little <laughs> something under my breath. Like, and I think she had never heard me curse before. Oh, Lord. But you know, you know, little kids be cussing on the playground. So I'm forgetting I'm at the house. I'm like, man, what the fuck, man? She was like, what? What? I just heard in the other room and I just sat still for a minute. Oh, shit. And I just, I was just quiet. And the next thing I know, man, she came in the room, bro. And, and that switch that, that hit oh, my legs. Oh, Lord, a switch. It was a switch because she oh, had it Lord. left over. Cause I didn't get punished that much, but if I but if I got hit with something, it was a switch, 
and she had it left over, and it was a good Left over, long, he had a left over, had a left over I had switch. Left over switches, he had a special I reserve had, switch. A special reserve switch, <laughs> straight from my ass. So, bro, she hit me so hard with that thing on the back of my leg. You know how when you get hit on the back of your thigh, <laughs> and like your, your calf muscle in the back mm. of your knee? Mm -hmm. Bro, it's nerves, mm -hmm. it's nerves back there. Mm -hmm. That give you that you ain't ready for. Of, that you ain't ready for, bro. Mm -hmm. And I, I got, I got hit with a couple of those, and and on the, uh, on the cheeks, and on, on the back, on the small of my back. And I, I think I let out one of those silent cries. One of, one of, one of, one of them, ah, one of them crescendos. And then, um, and then after that, that was it, man. And one of them good cries. I had one of them good cries too. With like, I took a nap after. <gasps> Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right that's the one right you know, there. You know, when you got to take a nap, when you like, man, take man. a shower and take a nap. <laughs> yeah, 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 dead ass. Now they, now they can take a bath. <laughs> 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 after you, oh. after you get the ass with you got to get in the tub. <laughs> that was me. That was me all day. But now, shout out to my mama, though, because because honestly, <laughs> if, if I didn't grow up getting disciplined the way that I did, I wasn't a bad kid, don't get me wrong. <laughs> But when I needed it, I needed it because I, I had a little smart mouth on it. <laughs> so, you know, when I needed to get cracked a couple of times, my mother would not hesitate. And I love her for it to this day. That's probably one, oh, of, one of the main reasons why I'm alive now, bro. Real shit. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shout out to moms, man. Uh, I saw other clips and stuff, uh, especially especially your viral clips from uh, uh, Comedy Hype and everything. I never knew that about yeah. your mom, but I didn't know how... I mean, you know, everybody gonna say their mom is solid, of course. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. your mom, especially on a business level, like God, Lee, like to have you right and have you straight like that so early in the nineties though. Yeah. Nineties though. Yeah. This the nineties yeah. where well black people, especially black people, didn't have if you didn't have the right representation, oh, you yeah. was gonna be it, hell, that can still happen now. Hell, yeah. I got it. You know what I'm saying? And just yep. the fact that your mom was there that that said, that speaks a lot of volume in the entertainment business, and just for and on behalf of Black women and just motherhood Absolutely. and parenthood, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot, man. No, no I, I I couldn't agree with you more, man. I uh, you know, I I've just been real blessed because the key word that you hit on too uh, earlier was representation. Yeah. Um, and especially as it relates to Black talent, um. You know, one of the main reasons why we always kind of got the shit into the stick when it comes to business mm. and entertainment and dealing with intellectual properties and stuff like that is because we haven't been represented properly. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's through an attorney or whether it's through uh, a, a manager or agent, you know, a lot of kids or a lot of people when they get involved, you know, they just trying to find a way out yeah. of, of their situation or, or they're trying to catapult, you know, to the next level in their lives. And I totally get that. Um, but along the way in that journey, man, like you really have to make sure that your business is straight. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of us haven't received that kind of education. Yeah. They don't teach that kind of stuff in school. And then most people that come that come or enter into the game, you know, are coming from families where they don't have any kind of background in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they have no real insight or wisdom to share with them in order mm -hmm. for them to stay protected. <laughs> but for me, in, in my situation, you know, I was fortunate. My mother had already been in the industry maybe 20, 20 years prior to that, uh, working wow. as a professional uh, recording artist. Yeah, she. Oh, through um, the 70s and 80s. Through oh, the 70s man, you and were 80s. Going sweet through the 90s, like. Yeah, through, no. Like, she, man, I've got 20 years into the 70s and 80s. I'm going to breeze through the 90s, bro. Bro, by that time, by that time, she knew the game. You know oh, okay, I mean? for real. She, she had already worked with legends herself, like Aretha yeah. Franklin, Curtis Mayfield. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Ohio players, her and my aunts had already, and my cousin Cynthia, they had already been in the business. So by the time I had expressed an interest to her and in wanting to get involved, she knew kind of like what the setup had to be. She didn't, yeah. she didn't, of course, have all the answers because, um, you know, when she entered into the game, she entered to, into it as an adult. Mm. And I'm entering into it as a kid, as a young performer, which is a different kind of a different kind of flow, a different kind of way that you arrange agreements and construct agreements. Yeah. And uh, it's a different way, uh, a different way by which you engage in a professional setting, like with a child. It's, mm -hmm. it's a different thing. Yeah. So um, at the same time that she knew a lot, we were kind of learning uh, together along the way. 
Uh, but when that opportunity came up with the Lion King, when that blessing came up, she knew exactly how to negotiate it alongside with my representatives because it was like a standard recording contract. Mm -hmm. So she knew, you know, from past experience, you know, and then just also seeing friends of hers, uh, herself that, yeah. that may have uh, dealt with certain issues contractually. She didn't want her son going through the same thing. <laughs> for real, for real deal. Yeah, and, and basically, <laughs> you know, gave me the game. Like she sat down at the kitchen table. I'll never forget when the agreement finally came through. And she showed me what was initially offered. And she said, okay, this is what we gonna do. She said, I know this seems like a lot right now. She said, but if they're willing to give this on the first offer coming out the gate, imagine what you can, or imagine what you can really get if you negotiate. This is the art of negotiation, Jason. And she sat and she taught me that on a, you know, on a very, um, on a very basic level mm -hmm. uh, initially. And then uh, over time, whether it was that agreement or the next one that I went into, then she began to put me on the phone with her and my attorney and my manager hmm. and let me sit in on those calls. And then she would ask me questions after the call. Well, what did you think about what they said? Did you agree with them? Or if you were to make that decision right now, right now I'm making decisions on your behalf, but if you were to make that decision, what decision would you make and why? And so we would talk about things like that all the time. So by the time I entered into my adulthood and I began to you know, construct my, or put together my own infrastructure of people around me to represent me. I knew what I wanted, what to look for, mm -hmm. uh, what not, what, what I didn't want, mm -hmm. um, and the whole nine. And it, and you know, it's, it served me well. I think that, uh, you know, I'm here to this day and, and able to maintain a career and, and able to, um, still have good relationships <laughs> and, and things <laughs> like that based on, the principles that were that were instilled in me um, yeah. from my mother. You feel okay. me? Man, most most deaf, most deaf, man. Shout out to that right there, man. Hey, yeah. game, game city, game city out here, man. Yes, all sir. Right, right. Yes, sir. Right. Now, you know me and you, we gonna have that real conversation because <laughs> you a real player in the game. So we're gonna talk about it. We gonna, we gonna talk about it. You feel me? All right, let's go. Let's go. Much love, much love. All right. Name five good peoples in the industry. Five good people. Good peoples. Sure. Peoples. Okay. okay. Peoples. Peoples. Okay. Them, them damn good peoples. No, 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 no. I, I know exactly good folks. So, yeah, I know. So you, you over there in Georgia. You know what's up. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let me see, man. Mm. Good peoples. Good people. Good. Good folks. See, yeah. cause, cause see you, or it can be that three that because, be. because 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 if it, it, my aim is to cut you off. If it's if it's no, no. too much, make it three. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's it's, yeah, it's rare when you run into good people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three. That's a good one. I got him. I got him, y'all. Yeah, you got me stumped I on got that. Cause, cause, cause there are a lot. Well, first first of all, Oprah is good people. Okay. Oprah is good people, man. And I'm a, and I'm a, I'm gonna say why. I'm gonna give okay. the reason why. Okay. Um, I did a show years ago called Brewster Place. It was the series adaptation from the original miniseries that starred her and Jack A. Mm -hmm. um, it was a short-lived series uh, that was on ABC. And uh, I got the opportunity to work with Oprah at Harpo Studios, which was her studio that she has set up on the west side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say Oprah is good people's is because she gave local talent and black talent opportunities in the city of Chicago to enter into the game and like do their thing or to have like a cool platform to showcase their talent. Yeah. And there weren't there weren't a lot of um, producers and there weren't a lot of projects like that back then where you had a whole black ensemble cast and especially comprised of a lot of people that were there from the city. Yeah. So she so she employed, you know, in front of the camera people, and then there were like black crew members. There were gaffers. Mm. There were best boys. There were people in sound. There were people working behind the camera <laughs> assistants. And I saw that <laughs> at a at a at a at a very young age, and wow. um, it was something that she didn't publicize. It was something that she didn't openly promote, um, but it was something that I could tell she was doing out of the kindness of her heart. 
because she saw that there was a workforce there and, and that that needed uh, opportunities, and especially when it came to people of color. Yeah. So she was employing black people, she was employing brown people, she was employing women, she was giving women uh, opportunities to do their thing. You know, just anybody that um, that normally doesn't get a shot to go to the next level, she would. She she did that. Um, who hmm. else can I say? I mean, I'm just gonna say, and this is just based off of my own personal experience. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. if Michael Jackson hadn't given me the opportunity <laughs> that he gave me, I wouldn't be here where I'm at right now. Michael now, Jackson, about, shout out to MJ, y'all. Shout out to MJ. Now, I don't know about all that other shit, and we don't have to get all into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. We, 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 we ain't got you. Mean, we ain't got you. Yeah, because that shit ain't happened to yeah. me, and I don't know nothing yeah. about it. But we, what, I, what I do know is this. Michael Jackson and the Jackson family gave me an opportunity, man, um, to showcase my talent on a huge stage yeah. um, to an international audience. And if it hadn't been for him picking me personally, if it hadn't been for the support that I received from the Jackson family, Jermaine Jackson, his wife at the time, Margaret Maldonado, uh, Mrs. Jackson, uh, Mr. Jackson, Joe, and the whole thing. If I hadn't received um, that support from them, man, like I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be in this position now. Mm. Where I'm having this interview with you, and, yeah. and you explaining to me how much yeah, you know yeah, you yeah. like my work. Um, they gave me an opportunity, man. They 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 were the ones that ushered me to the forefront and allowed me to connect with our people, yeah, and with with a uh, with an audience and with a fan base that has continued to rock with me uh, even now. You know mm. what I'm saying? <laughs> at, at at the ripe age of 40 years old, For so real. um, so much respect. And much love to Michael Jackson. Uh, MJ. Because without, because without him, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in. So regardless of whatever, I'm thankful to him. I'm thankful to his family. Those are good people. And then, uh, you know what, man? I, uh, this is what I'll say too. This the last one ain't gotta too. be long. It ain't gotta be long. This is what I'll say too, man. Everybody that I've pretty much worked with have been good people, man. Okay. Like, I, I look because, be, no, because, because real shit, I've learned something from each that, one of them. No matter what. No matter what, I've yeah. learned something from each one of them. And at least they were gracious and kind and professional enough uh, at the time that they were working with me where they never made me feel like I didn't belong. Yeah. So if you never made me feel like I didn't belong or if I, if I walk, if I didn't walk away with any kind of negative feeling towards you, then nine times out of 10, you were good people to me. Cause, yeah. cause in that, and you know how it is in that artistic and creative exchange. Mm. That's a very kind of like intimate exchange mm. in itself. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When you're on stage with somebody, or mm. when you're performing with somebody and you learn things from each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. You learn subtle nuances. You yeah. learn subtle <laughs> yeah. techniques yeah, from each yeah, other. So yeah. um, there, are act there are actors that have uh, pulled me to the side, given me pointers. Marlon Wayans, John Marshall Jones, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, the list goes on. People who have taken the time, Ving Rains, people yeah. who have taken the time to pull me to the side and give me real knowledge and insight. Mm -hmm. So I've been fortunate, dog, to work with a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. Real shit. <laughs> most deaf, most deaf. All right. Jason, do you feel like you made it? And if, mm. why, why not? <laughs> do you feel mm. like you made it? Do you feel like you made Man, it? Man, you asked some really good questions. You know what? I feel like I've reached a certain level, but I have yet to reach my full potential. Okay. I know in my spiritual tank, there's more fuel left. Mm -hmm. I have not lived out my purpose yet, and that's what is being spoken to my spirit about. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so, so from that standpoint, no. And I'm not, I'm not gauging my made it off of any kind of success. I'm gauging my made it off of knowing that I fulfilled my purpose. Mm -hmm. Knowing that what I've been put here on this earth to do, that work has been done and my mission is complete in that sense. Yeah. So making it to me is that. Yeah. Because as we all know, there are levels to this game. <laughs> For real, a game and, of life. For real. And, <laughs> and, For real. And, and, there, and there are moments. <laughs> there are there are chapters. 
For real. You know what I'm saying? So one chapter, it looks like you've made it. Mm-hmm. But the next chapter will be like, oh, shit, he's made it. But mm-hmm. the next chapter could be like, oh, he kind of went going through like a little tough time. It, it'll seem mm-hmm. like that in the journey in the book. Yeah. And then yeah. the next chapter after that, you may be higher than what you were in the previous chapter. Mm-hmm. So there's never any real, for me, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, I've never gauged my career or my work off of that. And mm. I've never tried to live my life based off of that principle. I just want to fulfill my purpose. Mm. I just want to do my work, what mm. I've been put here to do. <laughs> and once that's done, hopefully when I leave here and when I go before I create it, I'll be able to say, I did a good job. Can you let me in this motherfucker? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and then, yes, sir. And then when, and then when that happens, <laughs> when, I can, when I can cross over that threshold, then I'll be like, nigga, I made it. He's like, Yo, <laughs> he, 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 he going to cut up on the other side. Exactly. That's on the other I'm side. Talking. All right, all right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Most people know you for black films and television, you know, television shows and movies. Mm-hmm. And then um and a lot of people will say, and they ask a lot of other actors too, who they never see in white films, they'll say, Well, how come I never see in white films? You know what I'm saying? Well, what's mm-hmm. up? Are they not seeing you the scripts or 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 what's going on? Are you not cool with that side? Explain mm-hmm. to the people what's your what's your journey of, of not being in in predominantly like white films. Oh, another good question. Um, well, I can only speak for my journey. Uh, I think I think with me personally, one of the main reasons why I've been featured in so many quote unquote black films. Mm. or films that are directly targeted to the black demographic yeah, is because studios and casting directors recognize that I have a genuine connection with my people. So <laughs> I, I'm, mm. a, I'm a go-to in that sense. You want to have a film that appeals to the black audience that's relatable, that the black audience will feel comfortable watching? Well, let's put some faces in there that black people are comfortable with. Yeah. Because they can identify with them. Yeah. So, and you know how it is as an actor and as a performer, when a gig comes your way, and if it makes sense, mm-hmm. and if it's good work, you're mm-hmm. going to do it. And it just so <laughs> happens that a lot of those opportunities that have been presented to me have been from Black producers or Black directors that go, hey, man, I know you can kill this role. And, um, you know, I know the audience will be able to relate to you come on in and, and work with us on this. Yeah. And then I think um, when it comes to white producers and what you would call mainstream films. Yeah, exactly. Black exactly. Black. Like, look, 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 I'm going to take the bullet for him. You know what I'm saying? Don't get on my dog. I'm going to take the bullet. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. no. no it's all good because we can keep it real because whatever I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not insulting anyone. We just keeping it real because we in the business and we know. Yeah. I mean, man, they pick a select few that they feel are <laughs> marketable. Okay. Safe. <laughs> um, hey, I, I, I like that. I like what you said. <laughs> seriously, though. No, really. Like, marketable? Safe? Okay. <laughs> to where they know, like, you, I mean, keeping it real, like. For real, G shit. They'll, they'll, they'll look at, like, They'll look at you like, is this a cat that I want to have at my friend? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would, like, I let oh. him date, would I let him date my daughter? Like, hey, is he cool like that? Like, you know, I'm keeping it real. Is he, an, Ameri- real. Is he an American Negro or is he Marshawn Lynch? Right, right. So you know exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so with white producers and with white casting directors, they can be very selective. There is okay. still, as you know, and this is something that, all of us as black actors, as colleagues, we discuss amongst ourselves. And when given the opportunity on a grand stage to speak eloquently about it mm-hmm. or speak on, on behalf of it or talk about it, mm-hmm. we, ra- we raise the point. Yeah. Um, there, there's still a lot of discrimination that we deal with in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's why you have more of us developing our own content, which was needed. Mm -hmm. That's why you have more of us who are straying from going the more traditional route Mm -hmm. 
mm. and generating and building our audiences via streaming platforms, which yeah, at the yeah, end yeah. of the day, you you tend to make more on the back end mm. from anyway, without yeah. any studio assistance. Yeah. Um, and I think overall, too, it, it, it makes us even hungrier in a sense to go, okay, well, they won't let us in. Well, I'm going to build my own vehicle and I'm going to make it diverse and I'm going to do something. And it really just, I think at the end of the day, makes us greater yeah. as black performers, even when being challenged or even when it seem like, seems like doors are being closed on us. That just lights the fire even more. And that's why you have people like the Kenya Barrises, the hmm. Lena Waits the Ava DuVernay's, the Issa, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. why you have those kinds of um, very prominent and very strong, like that strong presence that they have in Hollywood yeah, yeah, yeah. behind the scenes because they were those people at one point in time whose scripts were being turned down, mm -hmm. who were told, oh, that's <laughs> too black, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. now, now that they've been given an opportunity, and, and rightfully so, they are unapologetically black. Exactly. And what, and what they explain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think uh, I think it's a catch-22. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that it does happen and that we do have to resort to, you know, having to work uh, 10 times harder in order to get our foot through the door. But I also think that um, the end result of it shows our true brilliance because <laughs> we make it through all of that, yeah. and yet we still get our projects out and they're still awesome and they still get recognized you know what i'm yeah. saying for for how beautiful uh and creative and awesome that they are you know <laughs> what i mean so yeah. that's just how i feel about it but i mean that being said if there's a white producer looking at this right now holla at me <laughs> I <did. laughs> I'll, I'll do your main thing too get at me hey but 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 other than that i mean i i don't hold any uh I don't hold any I don't, any resentment about that, like, you know, and I don't feel, I don't feel in any kind of way like I'm being short sighted or that I'm being overlooked yeah. because, as you and I both know, like this is a journey that we're on as artists, mm -hmm. and you know, tomorrow I could get a call from, I mean, who knows? But tomorrow I could get a call from Steven Spielberg, see me in some random shit, mm -hmm. and he'll say, "Hey, man, I want you to be a part of this film." It could happen yeah. just like that, but For in the real. meantime. I'm just going to continue to enjoy the journey. I'm going to I'm going to continue to embrace the blessings that have been brought in my life, whether it's a black film or a mainstream film. And at the end of the day, I'm going to keep entertaining people that rock with me and that fuck with me. And that, <laughs> and as long as I got that and I'm able to put food on the table and keep a roof over me and my family's head, we good. And I ain't got no complaint. We good. We good. Real there talk. All right. All right. Um, what was and is your process going through scripts, remembering all those lines in such a short amount of time? Mm. Because let me tell you about me, man. Uh, okay. I, you know, uh, I only been in one major movie and been in a, a, you know a few other off stuff or whatever, and and, and a couple of TV shows. But um, which you were great too in that that movie. It was with Melissa McCarthy, right? Yeah, the Heat. The Heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. you were funny yeah. in that shit, man. So appreciate that. Appreciate that. So my thing is, let me tell you about me. You know, I, I'm not going to go too long. When yeah. I get scripts, man, um, <laughs> first off, I'm so used to doing me. Right. That's, that's that's number one. I, I wasn't brought up into the traditional time of acting. So when people say, what's up with them scripts? I'd be like, bro, I'm so used to doing me. I got to tell these people no because, you know, I'm, I got to build my own stuff. But when I get scripts, it was at a time I was getting two, three scripts a week. And yeah. they would say, hey, submit your, submit your script tomorrow, you know, at 9 p.m. or, or, or you know, at 8, 8 a.m. I'm like, God, Lee, I, I got to drop everything I'm doing or whatever. Remember yeah. that. Get my acting coach. And, and disregard everything that I had running. Yeah. I, I feel like for me, I need at least two to three hard days to sit on a script before I even submit it. At least two okay. to three hard days. Well, if I'm getting two, if I'm getting two or more in a week, mm -hmm. you might not get one of them scripts. If if either one of them bitches, that's just me. I got so, you. So, what's your process for like staying focused and really like because you've been doing it since you was a kid, so you on a whole other level. <laughs> right, right. No, I, it's funny that you would say that. Uh, your process, M mine is actually a little bit different. Um, because my mind has been trained 
to break down that kind of information since an early age. Mm -hmm. I can go through about four or five scripts in a week if they're sent to me. And I, and I can do, I can honestly do an audition a day based off a cold read. So if you send me some sides, if you send me some sides at 9 a.m. and you say, this is a producer's session at 6 p.m. at Warner Brothers, you think you can get over there and do it and be kind of off page. And they I'll give you, it. and they give you nine page. Well, they give you nine pages. I can do it. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of information. To Seven retain. and nine. Seven and that's nine. That's a lot. No, nah, that's a lot of information to retain. I, but I've done it before. I've done it before off of a, off of a cold read. And it was maybe like 10 pages of dialogue, but it was broken up. Mm -hmm. the dialogue was broken up, as you know, how sides yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And then the way that the dialogue was structured, it was so natural to me because I think I may have had an experience, a similar experience of what was being described in the script. Mm -hmm. It was easy for me to dial in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, you know, I've had uh, scripts that have been sent to me uh, where it'll be the day, the night before, and then they'll go, um, oh, the, the audition is at 11 tomorrow. You think you can make it? Now, for me, that's an ample amount of time because hmm. being <clears throat> on sitcom television, that's what I was sitcom about to television, yeah, it's like that pacing is like that. All that information so, you gather. All that information, like the first day, your first average day on the sitcom set is table read, and then you put it up, you put it up on its feet, and you start doing camera blocking, and they would prefer, they would really like for you to be off book by the next morning. Wow! So that you can like, Man, at, least that's, 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 at least that's how it was it, back then. People don't know how much how tough of a job this is, man. It is no, it's, and it's all mental. You For real. I mean? So, so a lot of people like even when an actor goes or gets through performing, and they go, "Man, I'm exhausted," and they go, well, "Man, you ain't do shit. You just acting." Man, yeah, right. It's like, nah, man, I'm retaining a lot of information and applying a lot of information from notes that I've been given. I got a hundred things going on in my mind as I'm portraying this character. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot more to it than than people think. But for me, and I know it, you know, the same thing is for you probably. Man, it's fun. I like challenging myself um, mentally like that. I like um, I like pushing myself as far as my God given uh, gift yeah. and ability. I like stretching and seeing what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, what may be a challenge for me? What may I, what I may need to improve upon? Uh, because I've noticed when I get challenged like that and when I get stretched, man, I I turn out to be an even better performer. Mm. And and I turned out to be way stronger than than I thought that you know mm. I initially was. <laughs> so you know it's it's um it's fun for me. But I would encourage you with your agent or with your manager because I do this now too. Um, yeah. And it's really just a fact of I don't want to drop everything that I'm doing in my life at that time just so I could be prepared for something at eight a.m. tomorrow. Like I, real, I tell man. my agent now, like. For real. Like, hey man, give me. Can I get it in? if it comes in on Monday? I'll be like, man, can I get it in on Wednesday? Can I get the self tape in on Wednesday? Because man, right yeah. now I'm sitting here having dinner, and I was planning on going to a movie with my mm -hmm. little chick real quick. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to go home and study some lines right now, especially yeah. for something where it's a, a twenty percent chance that I'll get the shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. like, your yeah, mind was I'm all about work. work. Mine was all about work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it, and, it, and it's cool, but I think. As you get older, um, and again, harkening back to what we were talking about earlier, balance. When you begin to incorporate balance yeah. into your life on a real <laughs> level, then you go, hey, man, am I really going to stop what I'm doing with my son right now to rush home and do that shit? Like, man, I'm over here having dinner with my son. Mm -hmm. right? like, man, let me go and enjoy this moment mm -hmm. because all I'm going to do to rush to do that job is so I can make <laughs> more money to hopefully have another moment like this. Exactly. So let me just be in the present now and, and do this. And, and thankfully, I have a good team of people around me that are very understanding uh, and that have worked with me for, for years and, uh, and give me that, that amount of space that I need uh, yeah. to, to live my life but also be prepared. You feel me? Most there. Most there. All right, all right, all right, all right. We about to wrap it on up. 
One okay. more question, one more question, and then we're going to get into the pick one session, and then that's it. One okay. more question. Okay. What's some other things you would like to accomplish in life before it's all said and done? Oh, man. Man, you got some really good questions, baby. <laughs> Appreciate man, that. that's good. Uh, I definitely want to direct some films. Like, before I die, I definitely want to direct some features. Hey, I, I, um, I, I, I ain't mean to cut you off. Sure. Didn't you, you did a old, didn't you write a movie? It was some movie you did. It was like on Netflix. It was some, Mm-mm. I remember Mm-mm. you went, you, you never wrote a movie? Nah. I mean, you I, never I, executive written, produced a movie? I've written some scripts before. Uh, you never wrote anything with like a love? No. Oh, no. I mean, I got a producer credit for um, for Love for Sale. That was an independent film that I did a while ago with uh, Swirl Film. Shout out to Swirl Film, Derek Thomas Sudis, Keith Neal. I, got I remember a, something with your name around. Okay, okay. Keep going. My bad, my bad, my bad. It, could, it, it was either that, I got a producer credit on that, and I got a producer credit on Dysfunctional Friends. Dysfunctional Friend. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. the one. That's the yeah. one. Because I yeah, remember I you going got, on Candy Coated Nights. Yes. And you and said something about it. I be watching, bro. That's right. That's I right. was there. Man, you saw uh, Candy Coated Nights. Man, there. I was there. I was watching live. I'm like, oh, yeah. They're going to be done. You know what oh, you were there when we did I the mean, interview? We never met at the time, but I was watching, and I watched that interview live. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, Dysfunctional Man, Friends. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Dysfunctional Friends. Um, I actually got that opportunity through my good friend, Atari Turner. Shout out to Datari. Um, basically, uh, Datari and Wesley Jonathan, mm-hmm. uh, who's also a producer on it, they had packaged this film and they were trying to build like a real cool ensemble cast and more or less as an incentive to get mm-hmm. certain names attached. You know how that goes. Like, yeah, they'll be like, oh man, yeah. I'll give you something on the back end. Yeah, you know, yeah, come in as a yeah, producer. Yeah. So it was one of those, it was one of those arrangements, but I hadn't, I hadn't been behind the scenes like, you know, building the IP and packaging it. And I just, I showed up on set and I got a credit on the back yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I'm doing now, uh, you know, working alongside with uh, with Lena Waif and her company at Hillman Grad, uh, working with um, G- Geneva Wasserman and, and uh, her people at Comedy Central and working with Mark Stewart and, and Judy Stewart and, and developing these projects. These are things that I'm, deeply embedded in that yeah. my hands are like wrapped around and um you know I just want to bring those things to fruition and then I want to direct some features there's a couple uh passion projects that I want to do uh based in my hometown of Chicago mm-hmm. uh stories that haven't been told you know regarding like the black culture there and black yeah. families there I want to tell more of those kind of story and uh you know just produce and write and and even when that's all said and done, when I feel like I've crossed over that particular threshold, then I want I want to really give back to the community mm. that I came from by putting a, a film program, like a film school uh, program I see. in, uh, I in see. my old high school, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and giving those kids, you know, who are visionaries an opportunity to learn the craft for real yeah. uh, in all aspects of it, whether it's in front of the camera, whether it's behind the camera, whether it's being a director, whether it's being a lighting guy, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's being a sound guy, like yeah. I want our children um, from the gate, especially when going into these environments where they're preparing to go into the workforce, mm-hmm. I want them to be able to have the right tools and the legitimate tool mm-hmm. where they could go right into the workforce and do their thing mm-hmm. or know exactly what they need to do upon getting into Hollywood and pushing off their intellectual property. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even knowing how to break down a contract. Because cause even, cause even now, bro, and, For real. Not, and it hurt my heart to see it, but like, even with the shit that um, Meg Thee Stallion went through. Yeah. It's like, this is 2020. And it's still young artists. Seeing I, went through it. I, I went through it. A lot of people went through it, man. Like, yeah. we learn, man. We learn. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it shouldn't be a thing where, especially with us as black people, we got to learn the hard lessons. Yeah, we're the o- we're the only ones that have to learn the hard lessons in Hollywood. Yeah, but everybody else they get taught the game <laughs> because you know what I'm saying. Because somebody is going code of conduct, code of conduct, code of conduct, and it's just it's just a it's and I look at it like people 
have to make, they have to be willing to do that. You have to do that willingly to go, okay, I've reached a certain level of success. Now let me go back and let me teach these young kids or let me teach the next generation or let me build something to where they can come in and learn. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, it, unfortunately, a lot of those kind of situations aren't in our communities, but they need to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that there are more of us who um, are kind of taking those necessary steps, uh, taking a more active role in yeah. that regard to, to try to like give back in that regard through education and through resources, legitimate resources being provided. Man, you give people of color that, you give black children that, and they're, man, there's no <laughs> telling what we can do. We just Take lack the resources. The world. They got the That's real lot now, Hollywood. <laughs> real shit. I mean, that, I mean, really, man, when you look at our public schools and everything, one of the main mm-hmm. reasons why you see where we don't have a firm leg to stand on once we get out into the real world is because the educational system wasn't mm-hmm. set up for us to win from the beginning. Exactly. And we didn't have the tools and the resources provided to where we could learn certain things the right way mm-hmm. to be prepared to come into the workforce and be prepared to, you know, uh, initiate and begin a career. So yeah. that's what I want to do. And I specifically want to do that in my hometown of Chicago and working with the city, working with the local government, working with local activists, working with the <laughs> school system and trying <laughs> to find ways to implement those kind of programs into the schools. Hell yeah, man. Most deaf, most deaf. All yep. right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We finna get into the pick one session, man. We about to wrap it on up, man. Okay, all right. okay. We got, we got it. One, two, three, four. We got about five of them for you. All pick one. All right. You can't say both. You can't say, oh, uh, no, 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 no. You got to pick one. Okay, okay. All right. You got to go on through with it now. All right, here we go. Jason. Movie theater. Or Netflix? Movie theater. Why? There's nothing like that experience. That's that's how I fell in love with movie making, was going to the show. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's nothing, I mean, the smell, of, the smell of the popcorn, the sticky candy on the floor, the sticky soda on the floor, the, the funk yeah. that you smell in the theater from people sitting in there. I mean, I love that shit, man. I love it. That, that, to me, that's what going to the movies is all about. Like when I go see one of my movies in the theater, I'll be excited because I'll be like, man, I'm really making movies. Smell the popcorn. Bro. I'm really in this motherfucker. Like real talk. That shit funny. Yeah, he said the fault that come with. I really like that shit, man. I like it. I like it. Cause you know you in a theater and it's in a setting where you it's looking for at real. Film. It's, it's for, for real. real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, here you go. Stank Coochie. Ooh. Ooh, what's what's the other one, man? It, it doesn't. It, can it get any worse? This thing, coach. I I didn't think it could get any worse. My God, what is worse than that? That's that, that's probably still gonna be number one, regardless of what the, the next option is. Stank coochie is a man. That's a oh. no brainer. Oh, Don't nobody like right. no stank and coochie, bro. I shot it. <laughs> Mm-mm. Hey, me... <laughs> hey, stank coochie or uh, stank breath? Okay, oh, wait, stank which coochie. one? Which one you keeping? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Mm. Ooh! Whoa. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! Nah, I'm keeping a. <laughs> it's going on your record. No, 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 it's no, going no. on your record. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. No. I'm keeping, I'm keeping stank breath, cause stank, cause stank coochie you just can't deal with. See, you can do back shots on stank breath. You can give stank breath back shots. Well, y'all don't even have to look at each other in the face. You don't even have to look at me. Y'all have to hey, that's, me. Hey, that's real. That's real. That's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. So you, that's can do, real. you can do. You can do. You can do back shots. Yeah, that's real. That's real. That's, real, that's cool. real. Hey, you now you the first one to say that shit. Real talk. Real talk. You can do. You, you can do back shots. Hey, that's, you got that's, somebody in your face every day talking about give me some sugar, man, bro. Hey. And then, they, and then uh, coochie is stinking. Oh no, nah, no, nah, a bad coochie is a bad coochie. I just can't. I can't do that. I can't do that. You gotta have a nice smell of coochie. You just got to. <laughs> Cause I need that. I don't need no sugar all the time. I need some coochie. 
for you. Ain't got to give me no kisses. You ain't got to give me no sugar, no nothing. Hey. But hey. I need that coochie. Hey, I feel you. I feel you. That. Man, that, that's got to be fresh. I feel you so on that. All right, all right, all right. Ass or titties? Ass. 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 That's easy. Said all day. That's easy. I've never, I've never been a, never a been a breast guy. Bro, I mean, you got some. If you got some nice titties, that's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> but if you got a nice ass, you won. You won with me. You won. Ask him at Magic City. Ask him at Magic City about me, man. Hey. Bro, I used to be in there because. I'm I'm slowed down all that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, he go, he go, here come the aunt, here come the aunt. You know, you know, you know. Hey, hey, the first thing they do is put that hand up. Hey, they start. Hey, he going. Hey, aunt going back to the day, and then and he had to think about what he was about to say, and then he gonna say, "Well, you, well, you know." I just, you know uh. <laughs> now that's real talk, though. That's real talk. Because no, you know, I have I have slowed down considerably. Because I, I mean, man, I was in the strip club back in my twenties, in like my early thirties. I was in the strip club every other day they was calling me georgia power bro <laughs> bro i was in there paying bills mortgages wow i was going i was going ham so i've had my day and if you and, and my thing was everyone knew it if you had a nice ass you was gonna get this money all day from jay we you was hey. gonna, you was gonna get paid all day if you had a nice ass hey man man go ahead and tell all the youngins out there man get it out your system man yeah get it out no definitely get it out get it out system. your I mean, system because, I mean, when it's time for you to slow down, well, you first of all, you'll know. Every every man has that moment in his life where he goes, mm, that shit ain't for me no more. Yeah. And for me, it was just like, I think I went to I went to the club one time, and then I just felt so That shit kicked in. It kicked in. Yeah, it was that I day. Just, Everybody knew that. Everybody got that. Yeah, and it just, I, I I saw myself spending money. I think I looked at myself in one of the mirrors on the side <laughs> of the wall. And I was like, man, why am I sitting here spending all this money? And I got bills and shit to pay. And, man, man let me get up from this motherfucker. And I just felt lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, knew, I knew at the end of the day, like, man, if you want to be around, you know, a nice young lady with a nice body, man, go and take a nice young lady with a nice body out to dinner. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. spend time with her and, and that's an investment because you're investing your time your energy and your currency into somebody who could possibly bring something to your life exactly, exactly. in a strip club <laughs> all they doing is taking and all you walking out of there with is a hard dick because they're not coming home with you exactly you know what i'm saying unless you unless you, you got know, that bread bread unless you got that bread bread and then, yeah, exactly. you know, that's not really <laughs> that's fun. on a whole other level like, exactly yeah, that's it's a whole other level so, so after that, I was like, uh, I'm done. And then I just started like spending more time behind the computer, man, and just writing and developing stuff and, and really um, focusing more on my family, man. You know, mm-hmm. focusing more on, on uh, spending time with my son, spending time with my mother, spending time with my friends and having yeah. more meaningful experiences in life. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. But, that, but that, doesn't, that doesn't mean now, you know, if a friend comes to Atlanta, and they want to go out, they want to do something. And if, you know, yeah. if they want to get a drink, and if you want to go to Pink Pony or something, or Magic, yeah. you know, I'll go and I'll meet you up there and have a drink with you. But I ain't finna be on no, you know, every day or every other day type shit. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm past that. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Getting closer. Okay. You're running on the bridge, and you see your best friend drowning in the water. Okay. And you also see your career. Who you saving? My best friend. Okay. My okay. best friend. Okay. I asked everybody this. I asked everybody this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my best friend because, I mean, that's a life. You know, that's a life, man. You can you can replace a career. You can go and do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't have another best friend. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Most, most, yeah. Real shit. Real. So, <laughs> you know, you get, you, I mean, honestly, I've gotten more joy in my life being around people and having experiences with people yeah. versus whatever money I've made or whatever I've accomplished. Yeah. The, exp- the experiences that I had with those people in those things is what's made them memorable. Yeah, it's yeah. The people. You know what I'm saying? It's the people that have helped make them memorable. So, mm-hmm. nah, that, that, that's an easy answer on that one. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Now, it's a follow-up to that. It's everybody get the same question now. All right, when, okay. it comes to th- when it comes to this one. Okay. You run on the bridge and you see your best friend drowning and you see Jesus drowning. Who you say? 
Man. <laughs> That's the follow Man, Jesus, man, Jesus going to get that all day, bro. <laughs> Jesus going to get that all day. I'm going to be like, Lord, well, first of all, I'm going to ask, you can't save yourself? Can you create a miracle? If you ain't got that much time, you better pick one. Yeah, if Jesus like, no, nigga, I'm drowning. What if he under the water and all you see is the hand like, to get the Lord, man. Oh Lord, you gonna leave your friend hanging, bro? And I'm going to get the Lord, man. I'm now what? Because uh, anything is possible with Jesus, no. my best friend. Most of the time, he may come with me, come with excuses. If I ask him, "Hey, dog, I need to borrow a million dollars," <laughs> oh, I ain't got it. But Jesus gonna find a way. All right, all right, uh, all right. <laughs> so, so if you swept Jesus out of the water and you said, "Hey, man, man, I know you're Jesus now, but can you get my friend?" Jesus like, "No, nah, I just want to see if you're gonna get me." And I'll be like, you bogus. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we worshiping you then? Nah, I'll be like, man, you bogus. All right, all right, you know, all right. But no, right. Jesus, Jesus always, he always going to be number one, man. The Lord, the Lord going to always be that. He know it. I got you. I got you. All right. Will Smith or Samuel Jackson? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it clicked in. It clicked in. Yeah, it clicked in. It clicked right. in. I thought about that too. I thought about that too, man. I thought I, I started to make it. I started to make it Denzel and Samuel, and that wouldn't have been it because I knew who you, who you would have picked. You would have picked Denzel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Denzel. That's why I threw Will in that joke. I said, let me put Will and Samuel, and you gonna think about it differently. Damn. You know what? Hey, on some real shit, Samuel Jackson ain't never gave me no part. Will Smith was one of the producers of ATL. I'm rocking with Will Smith. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I ain't know I'm that. A, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rock with Will, and then and then on top of that too, Will, um, him and Jada with Overbrook uh, Productions. Yeah, shout, shout, yeah, shout out Shout out Shout out to Overbrook. They are constantly and and James Lasseter. Shout out to James. Man, they they are always trying to provide uh, platforms and outlets. Yeah. Uh, for black talent or just for talent, period, to get out. They're really really active. Uh, oh, shout out to Charlie Mack too, my yeah. dog. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I rock with Will, and then Will, Will is really versatile. Like Will is your summer blockbuster action hero hmm. who could carry the film, who could do all the stunts and all that shit, and then Will can give you a good ninety minutes of real drama. I'm talking about where he displays a full range of emotion. Um, where he'll be totally outside of himself, where you may forget sometimes that that's Will Smith. <laughs> um, hmm. So from so also from uh, from a legitimate acting standpoint, uh, the range I've seen Will Smith display, I think he goes a little bit deeper than Samuel L. Jackson. I can understand and, why you say that. Yeah, and the reason why I say that too, just for the audience and for your audience out there mm. to kind of understand where I'm coming from, because I know you relate, I know you dig it. Like Samuel Jackson, although he plays different roles, he he has a niche way by which he executes his performances. Okay. Does that make sense? I get what you're so saying. So I get it's what you're like saying. I get what you're saying. So, it's it's kind of it's kind of like you can almost expect it, that character is going to who, whoever he is and whatever he brings to a film, it's going to carry it's going to carry with him in every film. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a certain kind of energy that he projects. It's a certain uh, um, and attitude it's that he takes. Yeah, and it's and it's kind of expected. But you love it when it comes on screen. And he can switch like, up too. He can switch up. He can really do it. It just he can really do it. His but it's that's his go-to. It's like when you hire, when you cast Samuel Jackson in a film, or at least me, if I'm a director, I know I'm gonna get a cool cuss out. I know I'm gonna get, you know what I'm saying, some an aggressive kind of like kind of street, old school street. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I don't yeah, know yeah, how to yeah. really describe yeah. it. Yeah. But but Samuel Jackson has th has that kind of persona um, where you kind of expect where he's going to go with that role. And then I've never seen him too out of his comfort zone. 
in the roles exactly. that he played. Exactly. So and, and you know and you know like with Will with Will I've seen Will play. Uh, I mean, uh, in six degrees of separate, and I'm not saying everybody has to do this to display their range. Yeah. I'm just I'm pointing this out as an example. Mm-hmm. But in six degrees of separation, you know, Will played a a gay role. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Will played a. Uh, he played a single father in uh, Pursuit of Happiness, mm-hmm. uh, where him and his son were out on the street. And based on the true story and the, the range of emotion that he displayed in that film, I was really like, man, Will Smith is that dude. Like, yeah. that's, I mean, that's really, really dope. And then he can give you the predictable action star with the predictable quotables and be charming in those things and engaging in those things. And I mean, to me, he's just the the true definition of a movie star. Mm -hmm. And I think Samuel Jackson is an actor's actor. Like a best, (laughs) like a true best. You know what I'm saying? Like he's the guy that you go see when you want to see an actor get fucking Get game. You know what I'm saying? Get game. Game. that's the guy that you go see. And then when you want to be entertained and inspired, you go to Will Smith. Will Smith. You go to Will Smith. Yeah. Okay. And no, dis- and no disrespect to neither one. They both great. And to one. neither one. They're, man, the both of those gentlemen are amazing. I've had the pleasure of meeting both of them. They're both amazing men off camera. Uh, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for them. And I, I, I love them both for what they do. And the example that they set uh, for, you know, black actors like us, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Wine ain't on up, man. Last question. Okay. Oh, this one right here gets you. Oh, it's going to get you, though. It's going to get you. Okay. <clears throat> you been watching my interview before this? No, I didn't see one before this. My bad. Okay. My bad, JB. My bad. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I ain't mad. No, 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 no. I'm just saying I'm glad you didn't watch it. Okay. Because the question I'm going to ask you. Okay. You know, just making sure you wasn't you wasn't gonna prep up for what I was gonna ask you. That's why. So I'm glad oh, you no, didn't no, watch. No, no, no. <clears throat> yeah, I ain't wanna I ain't want them tight. They be like, you Man, you seen my shit? Man, you ain't seen my shit, no more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> nah, I'm nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay. If you had a pick between uh-huh. your dick and your eyes, which one are you getting rid of? Ooh. Man, I'm just gonna have to be Stevie Wonder out this thing, bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to be Stevie out in this bitch. Because, bruh, bruh, I look at it like this. Stevie still got kids. Stevie Stevie wrote some beautiful records, and he didn't see a damn thing. He wrote some beautiful records about love. How you think he know about love, bruh? Because he felt that shit. Yeah, damn. Hey, that's real shit. He said, he said how you think Stevie wanted to felt like, like, knew about love? He felt it. He didn't see it. He, he felt, felt it. it. Literally. He, and he wrote some beautiful shit. And then on top of that, he's got a he's got a lot of kids. So like Stevie, yeah, man, I'm keeping mine. What like, you, I mean, I'm I, I'm gonna feel it. What would you do? What would you do if? Do you believe that? You, I mean, this, this is just a bonus question. I mean, this ain't this is it's about to wrap up, y'all. But I'm just okay. <laughs> stuck into it. Do you believe that um, that uh, blind people can actually see? Like, like if somebody go to somebody and say, "Hey, man." One of your baby mamas ugly. Do you believe that uh, that, that that blind people know what ugly is? No, I I believe that blind people because because I have a couple of uh, friends of mine who are visually like physically impaired. ugly. No, they could tell when somebody's aura is off. I have friends oh, yeah. that can. I oh, have yeah. friends oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. who are visually impaired who can read your spiritual image. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. That that will tell me, like I'll be with one of my friends who's blind. And let's say somebody uh, approaches. Let's say we at lunch. Mm-hmm. All right, no, throwing you out a scenario. Where you going with it? And somebody walks up and they start speaking, and I introduce them, and that person walks away. I've had a blind friend tell me before, like, "Hey, how long have you known that person?" Mm-hmm. Uh, you know about ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, man, this is gonna sound kind of weird, but I sent some shit. I saw some shit around them, and their aura is kind of weird. I've I've had a blind person tell me that before, so I believe that they can do that. I, I believe that their mm-hmm. their senses are heightened, way high, way way, 
yeah, not only physically, but I think even spiritually, like even with the, what do they call it? What Chakra. do they call that gland? Chakra. The oh, oh P&I, P&I gland. Yeah. I believe that that particular gland or that third eye, yeah, so yeah. to speak, may be, you know, it's uh, out of the world. Compensating. Yeah. Compensating <laughs> yeah. for what they may not be able to actually see. Hmm. Me. Yeah, for real. So, that's just my theory on it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a good way to look at it, man. But hey, man, um, tell everybody what you got running, your socials, tell everybody what's up, what ain't happening, what's going on, what, what's happening, man? Yo, I just encourage everybody to um, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, my handle for both of those is it's Jason Weaver, I-T-S, Jason Weaver. On there, uh, man, I'll update y'all on all the different projects that I'm currently working on. Like what I was telling JD earlier, I'm producing uh, two animated projects. Uh, that will be coming out very soon. I'm also going to be releasing some new music soon. Uh, that's really, really dope. Uh, so yeah, just get updates on everything that I'm working on and then I'm about to release and put out. Uh, check me out at uh, It's Jason Weaver on Twitter and Instagram. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I really thank you, man, for coming on the show, man. Much love to you, man. Uh, nah, man, same to you. Man, let's get some work done, man. Hey. Like, like, bro, we got to... Uh, we really got to get together and discuss on a real level, you know, partnering up, yeah. you know, writing some stuff, developing yeah. some things. Cause I know you get busy as well. Yeah. And yeah. man, let, let, let's really figure it out. Cause I, I, I admire you a great deal. Yeah. Um, not, not only for what you do as a performer and as an actor, uh, but just also as a human being, man, I think that yeah. the work that you're doing out here and the example that you, that you're setting uh, for the community and for other performers coming up after you, I, I applaud you, man. Thank you, and man. I encourage you to keep doing your thing, man. And God bless you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. God bless you too, man. Much love, man, on this side as well, man. Salute to you, soldier, man. For sure. All right, all right, all right. man. Hey, this your boy JB, aka Spoken. We got my dog Jason Weaver on the line. And guess what? Unspoken truth. We I.